Okay, we go again side by side on the different uh, aneurysms of uh, cerebral, uh, cerebral arteries. Now I speak about surgery of aneurysm, aneurysms of anterior communicating artery. Last time we had A1 aneurysms, now we are coming to the midline. And uh, this is the background many times shown, but important always to show because it is the huge work and certainly the best and uh, largest database in the world on the cerebral aneurysms with extremely uh, uh, extremely good data and also long-term follow-ups of the patients and outcome of uh, treatment. So this is very important to have in these cases. So more than 18,000 patients and more than 22,000 cerebral aneurysms. This means that there are more than 4,000 ACAM aneurysms in this combined database. And uh, interesting to note that the first angiographies were done in Finland already before the second uh, Second World War, and also the first aneurysm was operated on uh, that year. So these were the primitive methods of treating aneurysms. After Second World War, aneurysm surgery began to in, uh, um, began to be, become more common. But aneurysms were ligated with silk or linen treats and uh, uh, regular clips were put on the base of the aneurysms. So these are the site of aneurysms in the Finnish databases. So we see that the anterior communicating artery aneurysms are 22% excluding the pericalsa artery aneurysms, which are for some reasons rather common in the Finnish uh, population. These aneurysms in anterior communicating artery, they are mainly saccular. Usually they are small or medium size. In our database, there were only two giant sized uh, anterior communicating artery aneurysms. There are four main directions. One inferior direction is directed to the chiasm optic nerve, then one forwards and then one upwards between A2s. And then, of course, the posterior direction is posterior to the anterior communicating artery. And as we saw in Victor Hugo Perez Perez lecture, so the posterior direction, they are very close to the perforating branches coming from the anterior communicating artery. And this is extremely important when treating these aneurysms by open surgery. These aneurysms, as mentioned, they are mainly small, upward between A2s might be also difficult to treat because coming from the side, by pterional or lateral supraopta approach, you have. A1 in front of the aneurysm, and so you might have difficulties to catch all the base of the aneurysm, but especially the posterior directions are sometimes difficult to treat. To preserve these perforators are crucial, like Victor Hugo Perez Perez mentioned, they feed very important areas and uh, lesion in perforators will produce so usual amnestic syndrome in these patients, which you can see also after bleeding, transient amnestic syndrome, that the perforators, posterior perforators are uh, damaged. So you have a long-term 
amnestic syndrome, making the patient different person. The patient have long-term confusion and uh, memory deficit. And in the acute phase, if you have the perforator injury, then they have also, also electrolytic disturbances, very common and sometimes difficult to treat. So because of the lesion in these perforating arteries, you might have rather high morbidity after treatment, especially because of the amnestic syndrome. The patient looks the same, but his memory is different and also the behavior is different. So it is a rather big social problem if that kind of complication occur. We have diagnosed uh, these aneurysms after initial CT showing subarachnoid hemorrhage. We have done immediately CT angio, and we have been happy with high level CT angios to treat these aneurysms. And when doing the surgery, there are some principles. You have to have proximal control. It helps a lot. Proximal control, I usually put on both A1 temporary clip and not on A2s because there's some backflow from the A2s. So you get more time to work sometimes rather complex aneurysms of anterior communicating artery. You have to dissect carefully the base. The base is usually directed to the side of the dominant A1. I prefer to go approach from the dominant A1 side, which is more common. The left A1 is dominant. So I operate more common on the left side than on the right side. There are, of course, differences, the different microsurgeons. Some some neurosurgeons prefer always to go from the right side, but I, I prefer to go from the dominant A1 side because I can put temporary clip there and then I feel more safe immediately. When operating from the left side, you might, as right-handed surgeon, you might have difficulties when you are very stable sitting, the, head end of the patient not moving, then you might think you have to use your left hand to clip the aneurysm. I have solved this problem. So I turn the microscope so that I'm operating from the side of the patient. So I can use my right hand also very well on the left side. So it doesn't matter anymore which hand is dominant when you turn to the side of the patient. And I feel I can see by far better the anatomy when I turn me totally to the side of the patient. So uh, for different types of aneurysm surgery, like everywhere with different sites, you have elective aneurysms, unruptured aneurysms. Then you have acute surgery in ruptured aneurysms. There are also Aneurysms with hematomas in anterior communicating aneurysms I will show next time, ruptured and more complex aneurysms. And then we have advanced approaches if you have large giant fusiform aneurysms, like I mentioned, the giant aneurysms are rare, but they may, and large ones may need very specific approaches, sometimes also bypass surgery. So when planning, <clears throat> like many times uh, mentioned, you have to take a look. How is the patient, other diseases, age, then what is the grade? Hunter has or World Federation or old grading of Poderel. If there is intracerebral hematoma, size of the aneurysm and if there are any calcifications, this is very important. 
surgical strategy, I always think how the anonymous is directed inside the head and tailor my approach, tailor the head position. According to that, I have always posi positioned the head, uh, patient's head myself in the skull clamps, formerly Mayfield, nowadays Sukita clamp, and uh, think carefully how the anonymous is directed then you should have a good working angle. And I change the head position frequently. I ask the anesthetic side to take the head higher, lower, frequently during the operation. And because I'm using the mouth switch in the microscope, so I can myself also very fast when standing change my angle in the operations. And as mentioned, on the left side, I go to the side to change my uh, dominant right hand so that I can work also very well on the left side, clip the aneurysms. And this is the craniotomy shown many times. Lateral supraorbital approach I have used since 80s, advantages, very little. Temporal muscle atrophy, never, never facial branch injury, and it is very fast and simple. So in 10 minutes, I'm down opening. I have the neura opened. And when you go down to the aneurysm, there are different modes of that. In the classical Yasakil way, you open the sylvian fissure widely to mobilize the frontal lobe. I'm doing very little of that. Sometimes I open the proximal sylvian fissure to find carotid bifurcation and A1 and then follow to the midline. But many times I go directly to anterior communicating artery and uh, dissect uh, on that ipsilateral side A1 and then I'm, I feel safe. I use water dissection to clean the area and the separate structures. Sharp dissection should be done when coming to the goal. And as mentioned, I use usually temporary clips on both A1s, except in the case when the aneurysm is directed down, it may prevent Contralateral A1 temporary leap. That's why I think it is good to go from the dominant side. You have at least on the dominant A1 temporary clip to have less bleeding if there is premature rupture. In fresh aneurysms, uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage, you may have red, angry, swollen brain. You have to change it to slack brain. And my trick has been I go through the smallest gap to lamina terminalis, open it. Sometimes it's not possible in ACAM aneurysms if the aneurysm is directed down. So you have to be very careful when going there. So then you have to suck basal assistance, but I have been using extremely seldom ventriculostomy. And okay. of course, extremely good neuroanesthesia helps to have a slack brain should not go with spatulas to the aneurysm site, compressing frontal, frontal or temporal lobe. You should create yeah, okay, space. You, you okay? Okay, you go ahead. You should uh, create space by sucking CSF from basal systems. And when the brain is slack, then you are ready to go to the aneurysm. This counts for all aneurysm sites. I will show some examples. Unruptured animals this time, and then next time I will show ruptured and more complicated aneurysms. So this is uh, from Helsinki experience, edited by Johan Choko. Unruptured and communicating segment aneurysm. That is A1 on the other side is very small, and as I mentioned, I go from the dominant side 
Here we see that the anus looks directed downwards. Actually, it is <coughs> directed downwards and to the right side. So we go from the left side. Left side was A1, was the strong one. And now we go down. This is the optic nerve release from basal systems. CSF dissect towards proximal sylvian fissure and then cut and the high magnification we got arachnoid fibers and we should soon see a one when you retract more from the vasali here dissect then you will see a one and i think we are soon coming to the anarch site a cam here in this case i went rather directly to the a1, a cam region, and we will see here a cam. And the anatomy is rather complex always in a cam aneurysm. So you have to be prepared to complex anatomy. So you have to dissect, dissect carefully to know which one is A1, which one is contralateral A1. And in this, peculiarly in this case, I make a partial resection of the Cyrus rectus. Sometimes the ACAM is located more anterior or more posterior. In this case, it is more, location is more posterior and also the Anderson direction is acquired, acquired uh, for clipping. Now I have caused atria bleeding there. How to manage that? Of course, this is, uh, as mentioned, there's a very important opener artery. So I put the patty there and now I put the spatula to compress it. And so the bleeding stops and will stop during the operation when the spatula is compressing, compressing the bleeding with the patty. And now we go to dissect the aneurysm. So the aneurysm first, when you take a look, it looks that this is the aneurysm, this is not. If you put a clip, then you have terrible complications, uh, infarction of the brain. So you have to dissect carefully. Okay, we lost his audio, we'll get it back. Just hang in there. We are doing well, John, don't worry. Okay, now this is the left A2 and I put on left A1, the dominant A1 temporary clip and now I coagulate the aneurysm, which is directed to the right side and Yeah, it is directed right side because of the dominance of the A1, it is directed right side. And now what I'm doing here, I'm lifting the aneurysm upwards with uh, small forceps, two more forceps. We are a little bit out of focus, but I've lift the aneurysm upwards and then put the pilot clip there on the base and begin to work more on the aneurysm. I coagulate it down take the temporary clip out you have to be very careful when you have two clips in the same region so that the handles are not touching each other you may have catastrophic complications and now Again, temporary clip. I took the clip away, the pilot clip, and then coagulate. No, I didn't take it. It's still there, pilot clip. I coagulate more, but I, I, I think there's, there's some base of the anonymous left. So now I took it away and then I 
lift the anors. You see that I'm lifting the anors because the base of the anors is, uh, is uh, behind this uh, corner. So I have to lift it and uh, maybe the solution would to put a curved clip there. But I use a straight clip here, maybe lifting, sucking the aneurysm inside the clip. Now this is the small forceps, tumor forceps. I'm lifting, drawing the aneurysm inside the clip to have a perfect clip at the base of the aneurysm. But looking at that, I would maybe better would have been a little bit curved clip there. I think it is okay now. So checking the situation, then we usually use Doppler and make ICG and then it is done. And you see that after compression with the spatula, the bleeding stopped there. And then we put some papaverine on the place. And these are the post-operative pictures, CD angio, perfect clipping of the small aneurysm and good recovery of the patient. So <clears throat> next patient has also unruptured aneurysm. Unruptured aneurysm are better to show the surgical techniques because the anatomy is clear. Here we go, you see, this aneurysm is directed downwards, mainly downwards. Here we go directly to the aneurysm side, leaving the craniotomy out and now put a pilot clip. You see on the left side, that was temporary clip, right A1, temporary clip and for some reasons there is now bleeding. The aneurysm has not been totally taken. It has very weak base. So we go up right here and check the cause of the bleeding. Put a small patty there to compress the bleeding. I usually operate the patient with systolic pressure 100 only in hypertensive patients and in patients with cerebral vasus spasm, I have been using higher pressure for surgery. Now there's a, it looks that there is a very thin part is outside of the clip at the base of the aneurysm. So this must be taken. The main part of the anus has been clipped, but the, there's a very weak part of the anus here. Here I cut the anus. We collected big number, hundreds of uh, anus for basic research and resulted uh, a lot of many research papers on aneurysm wall and formation of the aneurysms in Helsinki. So now we have to take very carefully care of the aneurysm. So I took the clip out, the pilot clip, and then coagulate down the aneurysm. And once more, clip out, and then we should take care of this very thin part here. So it will be coagulated down, shrinking down, and now I got nearly all the base besides my bipolar forceps, and now the clip is going there. I'm with suction. I'm sucking the aneurysm remnant inside the clip and 
take the left side temporary clip out and here again very carefully taking the temporary clip out and then once more vibrating killing the anorosum still changing with sucker i draw the anorosum inside the clip and put one more clip here so now use only papaverina this is supposed to protect see the angios showing exact clipping of the anorosum and one more two more videos this, this video is not running i i have clicked it's not this video is not running so next one edited by Perafong from Thailand, anterior communicating anonsum, looks rather complex, forward, upward, between a tooth. And we see the carotid artery here, right optic nerve and the high magnification opening the basal assistance by cutting the arachnoid and opening and in direction of the proximal sylvian fissure but not opening the sylvian fissure like the classical way is to open the whole sylvian fissure to mobilize the anterior at the frontal lobe now we see the anus beautifully we see the weak part like blood is going around there and now already i put temporary clip on the left contralateral a1 and then on the right one which is dominant here and now this is the pilot clip going on the broad base of the aneurysm and sucking with the suction now the soft aneurysm put the pilot clip and check the situation now help with the temporary clips you see the anorism is slack and we should now take a look on the perforators usually they are not in this directions direction in danger if the anorism is posterior direction then it is uh, in danger next time we will see the posterior direction how to manage manage with the posterior direction perforators now i take the temporary clip out not yet I put another clip. I took I had two clips and I took the lower one out. And I open this clip and it is, uh, I'm going obliquely oblique to the anorism, so it is not taking all the base of the anorism. I suspect took the temporary clips out, shaking coming from the mouthpiece. Then right a1 temporary clip taken out and then we make icg i think it the work on this anorism is not yet finished so i coagulate it down and i think the clip is not taking all the pace of the anorism but i shrink in the anorism with the help of this clip and then dissect more this is the check on the both sides of the anorism and then put one clip and take the 
original pilot clip out. The upper clip is only to prevent the rupture of the anorism when manipulating and now I take the clip out and change. Smaller clip, more slim clip, micro clip, long micro clip and take the this clip out and now check the situation. I still th think it is not, I'm not good. So I'm traveling with the clips. I go with the clip <coughs> proximal to the present one. All the time checking on the base of the anorism and now Still, still some base remains, I think. I go up like down the anorism. And one more clip there. And this solution is accepted, this is the final clipping and now ICT is done and so Patency of the both a, a tools like you see also under microscope and can hear with Doppler. And usually put Papa Rain on the operative area and then just closing. And this is post operative CT Angio. Anorism gone, patient doing well. Next time I will show ruptured anorisms and some complex ACAM anorisms. So skip now these. So this is my regular message to Chinese neurosurgeons, learn English. So you can publish your great experience big number of cases internationally, and this is very important to control your work. And don't save the beautiful Chinese hair. We are all the time speaking about minimal, minimal invasive surgery to cut the hair is very big damage for the patient. So we should take care of the patients, not to damage beautiful Chinese hair, especially in females. So we should have minimal invasive haircut besides minimal invasive surgery, not like the present practice. It's humiliating for the females and good practice to go back home and to socialize is very minimal haircut like in this young girl with parietal AVM operated on. She was very happy to preserve her hair. And there's a lot of speaking that to open the head is uh, dangerous. It is not so. We are no more living in the Huatua times. And I think uh, many of the fears against opening the head are associated with the regular total haircut, especially by females. So we should open the head in safe way, and those who cannot do that. So they should do something else than neuro, uh, neurosurgery, maybe go to endovascular surgery or neurology, psychiatry. And finally, most important thing in neurosurgery is good teamwork. No one can do surgery alone. If you think you are the only one in the operation room, you make a big mistake. Always the team is supporting you in many ways, also psychologically. This is from Henan Provincial People's Hospital. Uh, scrub nurse Ping, skillful nurse looking at the screen giving the instruments without speaking and in a very fast way, skillful way. This is good cooperation. So I thank you very much. Say Ni, Kitos.
Okay, this was my lecture on a cam anorisms. Are there any comments, questions on that? Then we have put all again. That is the big ups. That's your so can I ask a question, sir? Of course, of course, ma'am. Sir, uh, in case of posteriorly directed uh, ecomanerism, uh, what, what are your tips to save the perforators uh, during creeping? Uh, I will show next time, next time those, uh, Next time I will show the posterior direction, but uh, my tip number one, both a once temporary clips. And then the second tip is that you have to make cyrus rectus uh, resection to come to the, have a good view in the corner so, to see the aneurysm base. And usually you can dissect the perforators, like we saw in Victor Hugo Perez, Perez, uh, anatomical, beautiful anatomical the specimen. We saw that these uh, posterior perforators coming from anterior communicating artery, they usually are rather uh, large arteries for perforators, and you can eat them, them and save them. If you cannot, then the patient has amnestic syndrome and is a different person. Uh, after your surgery. This is very important. It looks the same, the patient looks the same, but it's not the same for the family and for the surrounding and usually no, no more able to work. And this amnestic syndrome is extremely difficult to repair by the nature. I will do so next time, posterior direction. If that, that's Thank okay. You. I, yeah. Thank you, sir. There is a professor, there is a question from um, Bora Lux. She's asking whether you have any factors, how to choose the, the approach side and rupture aneurysms, right? I, I mentioned in the beginning that I, I like to operate from the side of the bigger A1, from the dominant A1, because I feel more safe, comfortable, if I go on the side of a larger A1, so I can put immediately temporary clip there. And sometimes the analysis direction is so that I cannot, I cannot uh, go to the uh, contralateral A1 with my temporary clip. So to, it is better to have the dominant A1 uh, uh, <laughs> with uh, occluded with temporary clip. For example, Spessler, he told me always that uh, you, have, you have to go always from the right side. There's no difference there, but at least psychologically, I feel more safe, especially when you're operating freshly ruptured aneurysms. So I feel more safe if I go uh, from the dominant A1 side. So I can put immediately uh, temporary tip of one. The other side is, is taken, taken care by the uh, smaller A1, but enough. So I have a lot of time to dissect and also put the temporary clip on the contralateral side. So I, this is, uh, has been my choice and I feel comfortable. And I, as I mentioned, I'm right happy. So in the beginning, you have the feeling that you have to like that the other thing on the left, left I'm not uh, my left hand is not I have clipped aneurysms with the with left hand, but it is totally different from my right hand. So my the solution has been in the left side. I turn the side face, then my right hand is working very well for the left side approach. So this has been my problem big number of more than 1,000 ACAM anorsums I have done, so. For me, so good. Uh, 